In this video, I want to show you how to add Java doc style comments to your methods and then how to create unit tests to test to make sure that they work. Um, this is what I'm going to expect you to do on the homework, so uh, definitely watch the video. So Java doc style comments um, are comments that you can add at the top of your methods that explain what they do. So here's how you're going to add it. Um, put your cursor right above the method that you want to create. Um, why don't you go ahead and follow along and make this method um, because that way you'll be, be able to do what I can do. So I have a, a class called string methods and I've made a, uh, a static method that is called remove vowels. And I'll tell you what it does as we write the Java doc comment. So do slash star star star. And then if you hit enter, Eclipse will auto fill the rest of the comment for you. So usually uh, at the top here, you just have a general description of the purpose of this method. So I'll say um, returns a string that's identical to the input string with all the vowels removed, not including Y, which is not a vowel. <clears throat> okay, so here you see at sign param. Um, one of these is gonna get created for every single parameter that's an input to your method. And see how it says input? That matches the parameter name. So here you give a description of what is that input. What, what are you expecting? So. Um, this is a string to remove the vowels from. We don't even need to say this is a, so we just say a string to remove the vowels from. And then at sign return is a place for me to describe what is the return value. Um, and I'll say returns the input string with the vowels removed. Okay, so here's what's kind of neat about this. Um, let's say that I've made another class. So I'm going to make a class called random other class. And let's say I'm going to maybe use that method. So I'm going to say string methods, which notice that's the name of my class here where I actually created remove vowels. So I'll say string methods dot. And Eclipse has auto created this this list of all the possible methods and when I click here look at this it says returns a string that's identical to the input string with all the vowels removed not including Y so this is my Java doc and that's why it's called a Java doc it's because if you create your comments using that format um, you can automatically get the comments appearing inside Eclipse. You can also automatically create web pages that are sort of an overview of the API so that somebody else has sort of a manual for whatever class that you're making. So that's why to do it. It's because it's like a sort of nice way to document what it is that you're doing that will allow you to auto-generate other things. Okay, so now that we've covered Java Docs, let's write some unit tests. So here's uh, an easy way to make unit tests. Select the class that you want to test and right click and say new JUnit test case. And it's asking me what I want to name it and I'm going to name it string methods test. That's fine. Um, and notice string methods was the name of the class and so string methods test is the name of the JUnit tests. So this at sign test is an annotation um, which is a way of identifying that this method here is supposed to be one of our tests. This is what it says by default, but let me show you how you would fill it in. So what we're going to do is we're going to run our method and we're going to compare the answer that it gives to what we know the actual answer should be. So I'm going to say string methods dot remove vowels and I'm going to give it David as input. So now I'm running my method on the input David. I know that the answer should just be DVD because that's what happens when you remove the vowels. So the way that I tell my test this is I say assert equals answer and then the answer that I know it should be equal to. <clears throat> All right, so how do you actually run the test? Um, if I right click here and I say run as JUnit test, you see it says runs one out of one. What that means is that there was one test that I ran. There were zero errors and one failure. Zero errors means it didn't throw a runtime exception. So my method completed, it's just that it didn't return the answer that assert equals says that it's supposed to have returned. So it failed to give the correct output. So that's the difference between errors and failures. 
All right, so let's change our method so that it just conveniently gives us the right thing. Instead of returning the empty string, let's return DVD. So now when I run my JUnit test, it says that it passed. It, there was one test and zero failures. Um, so obviously, my method doesn't actually do what it's supposed to. It only does it in this one case. So let's add a couple of more tests. So I'm going to uh, change this to be test one. That's not a very descriptive name. You might want to give more descriptive names later. So I'm going to name this test two and test three, and I'm going to have a couple others. So um, old McDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. So that's sort of a, this is going to be an edge case, because when I remove the vowels, I'm literally removing everything. So it should give me the empty string. And let's do one with no vowels, XWPGT. So this is, should remove no vowels, so it should give me the string itself. And you could add more test cases if you wanted to. So now I'm going to run it again. And you see it says that I've passed the first test case. You can see the little green check mark because it returns DVD. But I've failed the other two tests. So I have two failures out of three runs. So that's how you create unit tests. Um, and if I had other methods inside string methods here, I could go ahead and create other tests that just run my other methods. Um, and in that case, I would probably want to rename this from test one to uh, maybe remove vowels test one so that I know what it is that is actually being tested here. All right, so for your homework, um, I expect you to complete the methods that I have in my handout and also to create the unit tests with test cases that you think are appropriate. And remember, whenever you're making test cases, you want both expected inputs and also edge case inputs. Um, a really good edge case here would be what happens if we have the empty string, for example, what's going to happen. Okay, 